Hey everyone, happy Friday. It's again a new Apex release out there. And as you can see on my shirt, today would have been the day of Apex RP Adria, uh, which we had to cancel due to a pandemic. It's not very often you can say stuff like that, right? So uh, I took a look at, at Apex 20.1. And as usual, I start out by looking what's changed in the metadata, what's changed in the, on the view layer. Um, are there any change or new APIs? Uh, I wrote a big blog post about it, ding, uh, where you can see the details. Um, for, for now, I just want to walk through the important things. So first off, there is a new feature, um, session timeout warning. Uh, which you can, can configure on workspace and, and application level. It simply pops up a nice little info box saying, hey, your session is about to time out soon. Do you want to extend it? Very neat feature. So for that, um, Apex Workspaces view has been enhanced with the session timeout worn seconds. Uh, same on the Apex applications plus uh, what's new in Apex 22. Uh, friendly URLs. So you can see that in Apex Applications view, if friendly URLs are set on or, or not. Also, there is a, a new setting authorized batch job, um, which simply uh, it's a yes, no toggle saying, hey, um, for any batch operations with this app, like um, subscription, subscriptions on reports, uh, do we have to enforce the authorization schemes? The Apex application substitutions view has been rebuilt. Uh, it still delivers the same content, but there was some uh, community thing going on. I think Scott Wesley was involved uh, and it's using Unpivo now. Uh, facets have been enhanced, so you can now have a cascading facets and facets depending on other stuff. You can define how do you want to sort those should they be sorted by top count upwards? Um, what's new? What else is new? A tenant ID. Who would have thought that a multi-tenant system like Apex needs another tenant ID, but here it is. Uh, you can see it in the Apex application page interactive report uh, view and also in the interactive grid view, they have been enhanced with a app tenant ID. Yeah, we will see what, what that is. What else? There are a bunch of new views. Apex application email templates. Thank you, that was missing. Great feature. Also, Apex patches. That's a view which will list which patch has been installed on that system. Very useful since there is only one big patch bundle per, per release. Uh, it's good to know which patches already have been installed and which not. And the, the third new view is Apex scheduler jobs, listing all the Apex scheduler jobs. So that's it for the views. On the PL SQL API side of things, um, and again, this is just a subset, all the details are in my blog. Um, Apex application has two new global variables indicating whether friendly URLs are used and what's the session timeout warning interval uh, Apex authentication brings in some SAML enhancements, Apex data parser, uh, just tiny enhancement with the XML namespace in case you have to deal with XML um, um, responses. Uh, Apex exec now supports binary doubles, um, binary values, and uh, search operators like starts with, end with, with and, and things like that. Big thing, new package, Apex IG, finally, the interactive grid package, quite similar to the interactive report package. Um, there's more details on Stefan Dobre's blog, uh, which I will link here. Um, Apex instance admin doesn't bring any new functions, but it brings in a whole lot of new instance parameters which sadly are not listed yet in the documentation, but I guess that will change soon. Um, Apex JSON has some CLOB output improvement, so you can mix HTTP and, and CLOB output. Uh, it's not new, but 
There is a public API, Apex LOE, which was introduced in Apex 19.2. It's not documented yet, so we don't really know um, if and how and why we should use it, but it's there. Uh, Apex page, the get URL function has been enhanced a bit with some, you know, what's the triggering element and my favorite, the plain URL argument. So in case you want to get the, the page URL, but without the JavaScript stuff in case it's a modal dialogue. Um, Apex region uh, has clear and, and reset functions, which of course work only on report like region types. Uh, and they work pretty, pretty similar to the interactive report things like RIR and CIR, uh, Apex session and, and watch this. There is a uh, emits timeout uh, function, which is used for the, you know, session timeout warning pop-up. And there is a set tenant ID, uh, which has a bit of a wrong documentation. Um, but there you can once in your session set a tenant and, and that later on um, can be used to store different, you know, interactive report views and, and grid views for that tenant. There is a new API, Apex String Util, uh, which has some, just some utility functions which really do not belong in the Apex String package, but uh, are around strings. Uh, Apex theme, um, set session style CSS, you can now add additional page CSS classes. And finally, Apex Web Services, apparently OAuth Authenticate is deprecated and OAuth Authenticate Credential is the new shit. So my highlights in, in this release on the view and API layer are definitely the new views, uh, Apex application email templates and Apex patches, uh, the plain URL argument on the Apex page get URL, the new par parameters for the instance admin, the IG package, and in general, the session timeout warning. I think it's a really neat feature and I can, can't understand to live without it anymore. So uh, there will be more in the near future. future. See you, bye.